Well, if I had a little bit more musical knowledge, I could make a joke about Jimmy Hendrix. Since I don't, I can't. <laughs> Let's get on with this review. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, just... Okay, so this is the Radeon RX 570. And, you know, what you need to know about the RX 570 in a nutshell is basically okay 1080p gaming. This is designed for games. Most games that are on the market today will run at high, medium high, ultra in a few cases, and you'll get, you know, 40 to 60 FPS at 1080p. Now, if you're like on ultra on something like Ashes of the Singularity, that's gonna be more in like the 40 FPS range, but if you set it a little lower than that, you'll get 60 FPS. On games like GTA 5 and, you know, just, uh, well, that's a DirectX 11 game, but, um, you know, Hitman, Witcher 3, 1080p around 50, 60 FPS. 60 FPS if you lower the settings a little bit. Yeah, it basically delivers on that promise. This is one of the fastest clocks RX 570s that I've taken a look at. It's 1311 for the OC, you know, boost clock thing, but you'll need to install the utility and enable OC mode. The other great thing about this card is the fans are totally silent until the graphics card goes past 55 degrees C. If you use this graphics card in combination with something like Radeon Chill, and you don't have a, a monitor that is gonna run at some obscene resolution, and you're playing something like Overwatch, or a MOBA, or something like that, uh, you may be able to get by without the fans even kicking on. Uh, speaking of fans, this card has a four pin fan header that you can use to control an external fan. So if you have a front fan or a side fan or an intake fan or something like that, the graphics card can actually directly control the fan so you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to set any software. You don't have to do anything. It's like, oh, the card's starting to get warm. It can sort of quench itself by bringing in more cool air from the outside, which is a nice feature. It only has one four pin fan header. Some of the higher end graphics cards from Asus and the Strix line have two. Uh, it does also have RGB. There's an RGB capability with the logo on the side, but it does not have an RGB header the way that some of the higher end cards do. Now the RGB LED uh, that is on the card is controllable from the Asus Aura software. So if you've got Aura with your motherboard or your case or whatever, and that's what you're using to control your RGB strips, you can totally use that. Uh, this does have a three year warranty. It is a completely automated manufacturing process. So theoretically taking the human element out of it will remove some of the mistakes and some of the manufacturing defects. So hopefully you won't have to take advantage of that warranty in the three year time period. Also included in the box are two Velcro cable straps and two stickers that you can use uh, in this area to sort of customize the look of your card a little bit. This is a dual slot card. It's also dual heat pipe design. So there's two copper heat pipes that sort of bring the heat to the rest of the heat sink for dissipation by the, the two fans that you see included. In terms of power requirements and power delivery, it is one eight pin power connector. The card will drop to 165 watts, at least in testing, that was with an extreme OC. I would say 150 watts or less is more typical. And there's not really a lot else in the box. It does include a two week trial of XSplit Gamecaster. So if you wanna use that for you know, streaming or whatever. There's a two week trial so you can try it out and see if you like it. I use Open Broadcaster personally. I think that works fine. In terms of display, the display connectors on this card is one display port, one HDMI 2.0 and two DVI. That's kind of unusual. I, I kind of figured they would go for two HDMI or, or two display port, but it's just one of each and then two DVI. So if you've got an older monitor, especially like the uh, Shimian 27 inch monitors, you could totally use that with this card and still have another you know, DVI connector. So if you're running older DVI displays, well, this, this card might be a better choice for you. Now in terms of PCB layout and power phase design and all that, it is a six plus two power phase design. It's got Asus's custom you know, choke coil assembly stuff for, for power delivery. It has long life capacitors that are rated at two and a half times the normal lifetime, about 90,000 hours beyond the normal lifetime of electrolytic capacitors. The MOSFETs have their own heat sink sort of underneath the main heat sink. It looks like there's gonna be ample airflow over that. And because it's an RX 570, it is of course compatible with FreeSync 2 as well as FreeSync if you happen to have a monitor that will do either implementation of FreeSync. Now for the benchmarks and testing, we did test at 1920 by 1080 for the resolution and 104% overclock using the Asus GPU Tweak 2 software. Starting off with the Heaven benchmark, the Strix RX 570 scored 2458 with an average FPS of 97.6. The benchmark was set on high quality, DirectX 11, and anti-aliasing was turned off. Following up with the benchmark, we also tested OpenGL, that's with Cinebench R15, and the uh, RX 570 finished with 112.78 uh, FPS in the Cinema 4D benchmark. Now we move on to Firestrike. Firestrike in the standard benchmark 
uh, landed just above the VR minimum spec with a score of 10,616 and a graphics score of 12,047. The Strix RX 570 handled the independent test well, but it did drop down to 18.99 FPS for the combined test. Finally, the Strix RX 570 and DirectX 12. Well, we tested DirectX 12 with Rise of the Tomb Raider at high settings with tessellation off, and the RX 570 received an overall score of 87.89 FPS, with the lowest recorded frame rate being 30.19 during the Syria portion of the benchmark. This is actually really impressive. I mean, DirectX 12 is where this card really shines. Now, for this card, because it is in the more budget-friendly range, at least... Assuming that, uh, you know, the Ethereum bubble has burst and miners aren't buying up all the cards and that sort of thing. We did a little bit of throwback testing. We also tested Bioshock Infinite just to see what the card would, would do. Under ultra quality at 1920 by 1080, the Strix 570 scored an overall average of 178.61, hitting a max FPS of 594 during the Monument Island portion of the benchmark. All in all, this card is a pretty solid. I mean, it's an RX 570, but it's the Strix version of the RX 570. So it's a really, really good RX 570. And you've got quite a bit of overclocking headroom. I mean, I, I didn't feel like 104% was the maximum that we could get out of the card, but I felt like 104% is something that everybody could get out of this card. So there you go. So the OC mode on this card running at 1310 megahertz is a 7% overclock of stock and that performance was realized in the games that we tested. So overall, not too bad. Now, I did also test this in older OEM systems, things like Hadell, Optiplex, a 9020, a HP Compaq Elite Workstation 6200, and some other OEM machines. Like the 400 series AMD graphics cards, this card will not post in most of those older Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge OEM systems. Now, if you've got a white box or a pre-built Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge system, you know, with a, with a motherboard in it that's, you know, it's a, it's a kit system basically, I think those will be fine. I, we don't really have any reports on our forum of people having trouble with those. But we had a lot of reports on our forum with people with the 400 series graphics cards not being able to use them in inexpensive and commodity OEM systems, even with upgraded power supplies, even in some cases, because you get like the Dell XPS 8300, that's a higher end system. And it won't post in that either. So, you know, take that as a, with a grain of salt, take that for what you will. If you're building a new system or you're building, you know, a low cost 1080p gaming system or you want it like a home theater PC and you want to be sure that you can do 1080p gaming, this is a pretty good choice. Probably down to this or the, the RX 580, something like that, something in the $200 range. It's, it's a really good deal for the money for what you get, uh, especially considering that most games will run fine at 1080p. The specific part number from ASUS on this, because sometimes it looks really similar, but it's not exactly the same, is the ROG Strix RX 570-04G Gaming. So if you picked up one of these, or you're thinking about picking up one of these, or you're doing comparison shopping and sort of trying to figure out which thing to do, join us in the forums at forum.level1text.com. You'll find me there. I'm Wendell, and I'm signing out.